At a certain point, I just, uh, out of frustration, I, I said, somebody has got to start pushing back on this. Wow, uh, I was uh, one of those kids that was really into things like dinosaurs and planets, and uh, I, I could reel off the names of all those, uh, those kind of things when I was at a very young age. Um, but what really kind of uh, kicked things off emotionally for me was, uh, it, as I w when I was growing up, uh, my, my parents got involved in it, issue related to energy right in my small Midwestern town. Uh, my, my mother, who was a very uh, uh, bright lady with a degree in chemistry, uh, was asking questions about uh, a nuclear plant that was going to be sited within the city limits of our town. It, it got very emotional. There were, there were death threats. There, were even, even, there wasn't even an attempt on, on my father's life. Uh, that's how ugly it got. 60 Minutes I got interested and, and came to our house and set up. Ed Bradley I showed up with his crew. Um, the Wall Street Journal picked it up, the New York Times. And so I was fascinated with the process and I was fascinated with the politics, the economics, and, and being on the inside and, and talking to scientists and lawyers and uh, all of the people that were involved. When I came of the age that I was starting to, to go to university, uh, I kind of ran in a different direction. Uh, I, I went to, to art school at the University of Michigan. And I felt like I'd kind of paid my dues as far as activism and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, but I remained uh, really viscerally interested in, in this whole issue of energy because I thought it was so important. And I, and I uh, started following the issue of climate change. And all the time becoming increasingly concerned about climate and the way that the information was being distorted, particularly on the internet. So for me, you know, from an early age, this is not, it's not an academic thing. It's not a, this is a visceral thing. And I, I developed that passion for getting it right uh, from those early days where I saw, where my parents were really had targets on their back. And it wasn't just a matter of, of uh, uh, it wasn't just of academic interest that they get it right. They really had to get it right because they were, they were under a microscope and uh, a hostile microscope. Mm -hmm. So that has uh, been what's sort of taught me and driven me to always, always, always go to the, 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 the primary sources, to the primary researchers, and, and ask them the questions and figure out what the mo most critical question to ask is. I think it was a gradual process, but I think Anybody that's seriously involved in this issue probably has had a moment and maybe several moments where they've w awakened in the middle of the night and, and, just, and just said, holy cow, this is terrifying what, what we're doing. And it, particularly if you're, if you're a parent, if you, I have two kids, um, I, I would not be able to sleep at night unless I was doing everything I could to, to turn this ship around. So that's, that's, the, that's, if there's a defining moment, it's just that, that sort of overall realization. When I see somebody saying something that uh, is either uh, deeply ignorant or, or sometimes uh, you, you realize they have to know better and, and they're being deceptive anyway. And that's, uh, I, I've stopped being astounded at that because uh, you know, it, it, it happens with regularity on, on the climate denial side. Well, when I hear from people that will say, you know, I thought this was all a bunch of nonsense, but I've been watching your videos and you know what? 
you're right. This is this is really a, a serious issue, and I'm and I'm passing these things around, and I'm letting people know. I, I was especially gratified uh, a year ago here when I met um, uh, Ray Bradley and Malcolm Hughes, uh, uh, and of course, I, and I've had a long-term acquaintance with uh, Mike Mann. These are all scientists who have been really, really uh, abused. Kevin Trenberth's another. Uh, and I've spent a lot of time pushing back specifically on some of the ways where they have been uh, unfairly uh, attacked. And, and they really appreciate that, and, and they've made that known to me. And, and to, that's, that's the greatest feedback that I could get, you know, that not only am I getting it right, uh, but, uh, but I'm, I'm uh, helping a lot of people clarify. Because uh, even some people that know a lot about the climate issue don't, haven't taken time to really delve into some of these uh, distortions and stuff like that. And, and I, I have disentangled them a little bit, and, and so they, they've really given me great feedback on that. This allows me to really kind of use 100% of my capacity or what I, what I feel like is my capacity. It's a, it's a creative job. I try to bring as much creativity to the videos as I can. I, I use music. I use all kinds of vis visuals. I do animation. Um, I, I bring in as much graphic material to clarify things as I can. And, and I have to think think, think about the narrative and simplifying the narrative. And that's where, you know, being a frustrated cartoonist for so long probably has helped me a lot. Uh, compressing things down and uh, getting to the heart of it. So, um, that's, that's when, when I'm working uh, on one of my videos, um, it's usually I'm in a state where I'd, I'd rather do that than eat or sleep or, or anything. I, I'm so involved in, in what I'm doing.